quite open to my idea about including baked beans on the menu. He explained that at one time the restaurant had brought out little pots of baked beans with the rolls and butter at the start of the meal, and that they had stopped doing this because so many other restaurants in Boston featured baked beans. I did not want him to think I liked the idea of the little pots at the start of the meal. Far from it. I thought it was a terrible idea. Baked beans at the start of the meal would not be a good appetizer, being so heavy and sweet. No, no, I said they should just be included somewhere on the menu. I happen to love baked beans, and I had been disappointed not to find them here in this Boston restaurant, along with the scrod, the rolls, and the Boston cream pie, all of which I ordered on the second night. My dinner companion, that is my brother, was tolerant of this protracted and perhaps pointless conversation either because he was happy enough to be sitting over a nice dinner and a glass of red wine after the difficult day he had had going here and there in the city, which is not his native city, as he attempted to complete several pieces of business in connection with our mother's estate, not all of which were successful, or else because I reminded him, in fact, of our mother, who was so very likely to start a conversation with a stranger, or rather it would be more truthful to say, could not let a stranger come anywhere near her without striking up a conversation with him, learning something about his life and letting him know about some firmly held conviction of hers, and who passed away last fall much to our regret. Although naturally enough certain of her habits bothered us while she was alive, we like to be reminded of her now because we miss her and we are even probably both adopting some of these very habits. I think my brother, in fact, added a suggestion of his own to the manager after sitting, listening quietly to mine. This was actually the second time, now at the urging of our waiter, who thought my idea was a good one, that I had called the manager over to our table. The first time I waved to him, it was not to speak to him about the baked beans or the spelling of scrod, but about another guest in the nearly empty dining room, a very poised little old woman, her hair in a pearl gray bun at the nape of her neck, who sat surprisingly low down on the banquette by the side of her much younger hired companion so that she had to reach quite far up and out to find her food. I had noticed her during my dinner the night before since we were near one another and there were even fewer guests and the companion and, and I had at last struck up a conversation during which I learned that the old woman lived a short walk away and had been having her dinner at the hotel every night for many years and that, in fact, I was inadvertently occupying her usual spot in the dining room under the brightest light. The companion, after consulting the old woman, had specified that she had been coming here for 30 years, which astonished me. But now, on the second night, the restaurant manager corrected this to a mere five or six years. I wanted to suggest, perhaps because I had drunk my glass of Cote du Rhone by then and was feeling inspired, that the hotel should make a photographic portrait of her and hang it on the wall in one of the rooms, since she was now part of the history of the hotel. I still think that would be a good idea and that you might consider it. In fact, later I got up from my chair, perhaps indiscreetly, and went over to the old woman and her companion as they were leaving and suggested the same thing to their obvious pleasure. I did not think it would be tactful, however, to bring up the spelling of Scrod so directly with the manager, and that is why I am instead now mentioning it in a letter to you. My stay in your grand hotel was delightful, and apart from perhaps the coolness of the restaurant manager, every aspect of the service and presentation was flawless, except for this one spelling mistake. I do believe the purported home of the Scrod should be a place where it is spelled correctly. Thanks for your attention. Yours sincerely. Now this one is much, much shorter. Letter to a frozen pea, peas manufacturer. Dear frozen peas manufacturer, we are writing to you because we feel that the peas illustrated on your package of frozen peas are a most unattractive color. <laughs> We are referring to the 16-ounce plastic package that shows three or four pods, one of them split open with peas rolling out near them. The peas are a dull yellow-green, more the color of pea soup than fresh peas, and nothing like the actual color of your peas, which are a nice bright dark green. The depicted peas are, moreover, moreover about three times the size of the actual peas inside the package which, together with their dull color, makes them even less appealing. 
They appear to be past their maturity and mealy in texture. Additionally, the color of your illustrated peas contrasts poorly with the color of the lettering and other decoration on your package, which is an almost harsh neon green. We have compared your depiction of peas to that of other frozen peas packages, and yours is by far the least appealing. <laughs> Most food manufacturers depict food on their packaging that is more attractive than the food inside and therefore deceptive. You are doing the opposite. You are, you are falsely representing your peas as less attractive than they actually are. We enjoy your peas and do not want your business to suffer. Please reconsider your art. Yours sincerely. I've sent that one off. but I haven't heard from them yet. <laughs> these, most, most of these really are born out of very sincere feelings. and I really don't want their business to suffer because they're very nice organic peas. So I want to let them know about that. Now, when I was um, translating the Proust, I more or less stopped writing altogether because it required such uh, an immense concentration. I really had to do it every minute I had to work. Um, but at one point, I did look at, uh, a, look at my notebooks, really, um, to see what it would be like. I had toyed with the idea of trying to write something extremely short in the sense that it would just have a title and one or two, maybe three lines, and see what was the shortest you could get and still have some impact, you know. Uh, and it's, um, it's, it's a very interesting thing to work with because that's all you have. You have the title and you have you have the one or two or three lines. And um, you have to do a lot of fiddling with, with it, usually. Um, so I did a number of those, since they were so short. And um, I've gone on doing them now and then. I, I tend to want what I write to respond to the material. So if, if the material only wants to be, you know, to have a to come to life in a very short, short, short thing, then so be it. If it wants a long, lot of space, then I give it a lot of space. So, so I'll, this, the ones I'll read first are probably a little weaker because they're newer. But I'll read a few pages of these. And, and they vary. It's surprising. You'd think there'd be a certain, they'd have a lot in common, but they're all, they all do different things. Hand. Beyond the hand holding this book that I'm reading, I see another hand lying idle and slightly out of focus. My extra hand. Late afternoon. How long the shadow is coming across the counter from this grain of salt. Fear of aging. At 28, she yearns to be 24 again. And people will react to that differently. That that struck me as, you know, I read in a notebook that that I was keeping at the age of 28, and I I, I had this sort of heartfelt cry of wanting to go back to being 24. <laughs> but if you're in your 50s, that just seems very very funny, you know. <laughs> but if you're not in your 50s, it's not that funny, I would think. If you're 28, you feel you've lost all those years since you were 24. The Fellowship won. It is not that you are not qualified to receive the fellowship. It is that each year your application is not good enough. <laughs> when at last your application is perfect, then you will receive the fellowship. The Fellowship too. It is not that you are not qualified to receive the fellowship. It is that your patience must be tested first. Each year you are patient, but not patient enough. When you have truly learned what it is to be patient, so much so that you forget all about the fellowship, then you will receive the fellowship. 